<laughs> it is a straightforward mansion made of stone carvings, limestone and ivory. A representation of power. It is unlike anywhere else in the nation. A home filled with both the past and the present. The monumental and ordinary cohabit here, which makes it an unusual location. It is where the most critical decisions in Kenya's history are made and where only a select few are permitted entrance. For this is more than just a building, a monument or a house. I will be at the front to say no to any change of the constitution, to change term limit. It is a representation of the nation as a whole and is known as State House. President takes this opportunity to stretch his legs and takes the MPs on a tour of State House Gardens. The atmosphere is casual, informed, and jovial. In Kenya, this home is not the largest. In fact, there are numerous others that are substantially larger. This isn't the finest house, but this is the most important house in Kenya. It is the best house because it possesses something more significant than the quantity of servants, rooms or size, and much more significant than the quantity of magnificent works of art. Today hey. will be one of the most demanding days ever for those who work inside the State House. About July 2015. Kenya. And US President Barack Obama, the most powerful man on the planet, is visiting the land of his forefathers. I am proud to be the first American president to come to Kenya. Each time a foreign leader visits the State House, the president has the opportunity to showcase Kenya's power and heritage in a setting that embodies them in every wall and stone. This serves as both the symbol of the presidency and in the eyes of the world, Kenya. Very shortly, Obama will arrive. And of course, I'm the first Kenyan American to be president of the United States. In terms of motions, the beast entrance. The host welcome remarks by President Uhuru Kenyatta. The military parade.
and the 21 gun salute. Everything must go according to protocol. The bilateral meetings will be the highlight of President Obama's visit. Does it concern you, government, that indeed there is corruption that has, it's a war that has been taken head on by our very president, and in fact, some of his cabinet secretaries and PSAs and top government officials are currently in court because of that. And it is important, I think, for the people of Kenya to say this is not the normal way of doing business and to say no to it at every level. They represent the fullest embodiment of Kenyan-American relations. I am proud to be the first American president to come to Kenya. It is difficult to picture a time before the State House existed because of its widespread recognition. But nearly 10 years after Kenya was established a colony of the British, the city of Nairobi was still little more than wild woodlands. In 1899, colonial authorities in British East Africa agreed to build a rail depot on the Uganda Railway, Nairobi. The land of cool waters in the Maasai language. It will grow quickly into a town, eventually replacing Machakos as the capital of Kenya in 1907. The government house would not have been built had it not been for one man, Sir Herbert Baker. The English architecture born in 1862 is remembered as a dominant force in the construction sector. In 1925, Becker was brought in to design a house for the governor. He went for the Palladian design he was famed for, a European architectural style derived from the work of the Venetian architect Andrea Palladio. It evolved from his concept of symmetry perspective and principles of formal classical architecture from ancient Greek and Roman traditions. It was built on a hill because the white settlers loved trees and wide boulevards and also feared floods. Therefore, Sir Herbert Becker, who was contracted to design the building, chose the hilly area around the arboretum that offered stunning views. Its foundations were dug by slaves, the stonework carved by masons. When it was finished, it was immense, a bigger home for then governor Sir Edward Gregg. Its architectural elements themselves embodies ideas about order, authority and proportion. Large white columned lodges serve as its defining features. Then and today, the heritage of the symbol is inescapable, something every leader learns upon arriving. The military tradition is not only meant to impress the visiting leader, It gives him the distinction of being welcomed at the house on the hill. On this day, the 13th of September 2022, William Ruto is welcoming foreign leaders to the State House. I, William Samoei Ruto. After being sworn in as the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya, I assume as president of Kenya, it is time for the official party. Do you swear that I will be faithful? That I will be faithful. It is the culmination of a full day that saw him take over from retired president 
Uhuru Kenyatta Ali Arun. Ruto is the fifth black African to occupy the state house. The first was Mze Joma Kenyatta who moved in on the 12th of December 1963 after Kenya gained independence. But it is intimated that Mze did not reside at the state house but instead preferred to stay in his Gatundu and Nairobi homes. He only used the state house to transact official business during the day. So you the know we never one. lived there. Yes. There is this major assumption that we used to live and we grew up in state house. Yes. Sisi tuliishi Gatundu. Yes. Kodi kwa tuliishi. Yeah. <laughs> All the way until my father passed away. That yeah. is when we actually came and started living in Nairobi. Yeah. And since he was no longer president, we right. could not live in state house. That's yeah, like one Zayo or Ushago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like Daily. To Nayanda Nyubani. Kabisa. Which means Daniel Arap Moy was the first president to sleep in the state house. My name is Enoxicolia, and this is the Kenyan historian.